I don't believe enough has been done for COP27 to be a success, so we have to see a lot more done. First of all, there, we have to see the, the big emitters who committed in Glasgow um, in COP26 that they would increase their ambition, and we're not seeing that. Uh, unfortunately, this terrible war, uh, the uh, invasion by the Russian Federation of Ukraine um, has distracted from uh, a focus on the big emitters, the, the G20. And I mean the United States, I mean Australia, which now has a different government, I mean China, I mean Russia, I mean Saudi Arabia, India, and we need to mention them and say that they need to do far more. The European Union is doing quite a lot but can still do more. Um, also, we have a promise to double climate finance, climate adaptation finance by 2025. We're now in 2022, nearly in 20, well, getting towards 2023. Where's the plan? Where's the action to double climate action finance? And uh, we saw at the end of COP26, almost a breakdown over loss and damage, uh, when uh, there was such disappointment that what was being agreed of a facility suddenly was undermined at the last minute. And we saw that, you know, we saw uh, Alex Sharma actually being emotional because he, he, he was himself very disappointed. So we need urgent action on loss and damage. Now, you know a lot about loss and damage and you know a lot about adaptation. So over to you. Yeah, um, I really agree with what you've said, especially on mitigation and adaptation. And I know that a hundred billion dollars was promised, but it was just promised. A long time ago now. A long time, yeah. <laughs> and it hasn't, <laughs> exactly. And it hasn't been delivered for the communities on the front lines of the climate crisis. And as we speak right now, the a hundred billion dollars is no longer enough. More money is needed to address mitigation, to address adaptation, and also, you know, loss and damage. And these are some of the things that will make COP27 a success, to see real money being put in place, no promised money, real money being put in place for mitigation, for adaptation, and also for a loss and damage facility. And I also think the other thing that really needs to be worked on right now is to ensure the representation of activists from Africa. We saw that challenge, um, you know, COP26 in Glasgow. Many activists in Africa couldn't attend probably because of some because of funding, some because of accreditation, some because of vaccines. So now that the COP is in Africa, it's been called an African COP, but what will really make it an African COP? We need that representation of African voices, African stories, and African experiences. And I believe more needs to be done on ensuring that we have more activists at the COP.